Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School lesson for Sunday, August 1st in the year of our Lord, 2021. I am Rev. Mary Tillman, Associate Minister at the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, and I will be presenting the lesson for today. We're still in the summer quarter study, which is Confident Hope, and we're in Unit 2, Faith and Salvation. Today's lesson, lesson number nine, is the last lesson in this unit to faith and salvation. The lesson title in the standard lesson commentary is Salvation Available to All. In the Faith Pathway Bible Studies for Adults, the lesson title is Seeking Confidence. Devotional reading, Psalm 19, verses 1 through 14. And our background scripture, Romans chapter 10, verses 5 through 17. Our print passage is also Romans 10, verses 5 through 17. And our key verse is the 13th verse of the 10th chapter of Romans. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation Bible today in our lesson study. The New Living Translation version reads as such, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to study your word. Please open our understanding so that we may exercise your teachings in our daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is our last lesson, as I said, in Unit 2 on Faith and Salvation. This quarter looks at God's gift of faith as the source of hope. The lessons in Unit 2 explored in Paul's letter to the Romans his understanding about the hope of salvation through faith. How committed and burdened are you for the lost souls? We know there are a lot of people that are lost, and it is our job as saints of God, children of God, to share the good news. In this week's lesson, the Apostle Paul expresses his concern and his heart's desire for lost souls that they might be saved. We find that in verse 1 of the 5th chapter of Romans, he starts out by saying, Dear brothers and sisters, the longing of my heart and my prayer to God is for the people of Israel to be saved We know that Israel were God's chosen people, but we also know that Jesus came and his own received him not. So Paul is pleading with the children of Israel, the nation of Israel, if you will, that his heart is longing and he's praying to God for them to be saved. The people in the church, everybody that goes to church is not necessarily saved. It is our job to pray for salvation for all. So, get your Sunday school book, your pen, your Bible, and a notepad, and follow along as we go forward in this lesson. Let's get started. This is such a wonderful, oh my goodness, powerful lesson. There are three questions I want you to consider. Number one, what was Paul's heartfelt desire for the Jews as expressed in this week's lesson? And number two, what must one do to become righteous with God? Question number three, who can deliver the gospel? Let's take a look at the lesson in biblical context. The lessons in this unit are in the book of Romans, the book of relationship, addressing faith and salvation. Paul, who wrote the book, was committed to spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. The central theme of Romans chapters 9 through 11 is Paul's concern about the salvation of the Jews. And as I stated earlier, Paul appeals to a largely Gentile congregation that his desire for the Jews was to see them saved. Their salvation was the object of his prayers. As you know, The Gentiles accepted Jesus, whereas the Jews did not. 
Paul had heartfelt concern that the Jews were unclear regarding the righteousness of God and the justification of sinners. Justification means that those who receive salvation are declared to be right with God. God has justified us through the death of his son and has given us a new standing or a new relationship through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Righteousness is a gift from God to humanity through his marvelous love. Righteousness cannot be obtained by works. Instead of receiving the grace of God, many Jews were striving to find acceptance with God by holding on to various customs and traditions in addition to God's law. They were seeking justification through the law. But the law cannot save. Only Jesus can grant justification and salvation. No man can be justified by his works. Jewish religion was based on meticulous obedience of the law. However, it was impossible to obey the law except and do it exactly 100%. The Jews had a system comprised of laws and regulations that they used to measure their faithfulness to God. The way of the law was not easy. It was impossible to follow all of them perfectly. The purpose of the law was to teach the people how to live peacefully. The law as a guide to moral behavior. Galatians three twenty four and 25 says, The law was our guardian until Christ came. It protected us until we could be made right with God through faith. And now that the way of faith has come, we no longer need the law as our guardian. In other words, brothers and sisters, Paul was saying because Jesus has come and paid the ultimate price for our sins through his suffering, his death, burial, and resurrection, we no longer live under the law, but grace through justification by God's Son. This justification is not for a select group or a nation, but for everyone, whosoever will, let him come. Rather than live by faith in God, the Jews established customs and traditions to try and make themselves right in God's sight. We cannot make ourselves right. Jesus is humanity's only hope of salvation. Let me say that again. Jesus is humanity's only hope of salvation. Paul's preaching was based on this simple truth. Paul was deeply concerned that many Jews failed to grasp that Jesus is the fulfillment of the law. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by him. We're talking about Jesus, and we'll find that in John 14, verse number 6. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, this week's lesson's aims are, as a result of experiencing this lesson, you should be able to do these things. One, explain Paul's confidence in the salvation offered in Christ. Two, feel justified through your faith in Christ. And three, embrace with joy the possibility of salvation for all. There are three lesson outlines in the Adult Pathway Sunday School book. I will share two key points from each of these outlines and expound some on each of them. Let's take a look at outline number one, the Word. Romans 10 Five through eight. But let me give you the three outlines. One is the word, your word, and Jesus' word. Romans five, Romans ten, verses five through eight from the New Living Translation reads For Moses writes that the law's way of making a person right with God requires obedience of its commands. But faith's way of getting right with God says Don't say in your heart who will go up to heaven to bring Christ down to earth. And don't say who will go to the place of the dead to bring Christ back to life again. In fact, 
It says the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. Key point number one. Speaking to the Jewish believers, Paul supported his argument that Jesus is salvation for all by referring to the scriptures. Rather than living by faith in God, the Jews established customs and traditions in addition to God's law to try to make themselves acceptable in God's sight. But human effort, no matter how sincere, can never substitute for the righteousness of God that God offers us by faith. The only way to earn salvation is to be perfect, and that is impossible. We can only hold out our empty hands and receive salvation as a gift. According to Paul, one reason the law was given was to show people how guilty they are. Read Galatians 3 and 19. The law was a shadow of Christ. That is, the sacrificial system educated the people so that when the true sacrifice came, they would be able to understand his work. Let's read Hebrews 10, 1 through 4. The old system under the law of Moses was only a shadow, a dim preview of the good things to come, not the good things themselves. The sacrifices under that system were repeated again and again, year after year, but they were never able to provide perfect cleansing for those who came to worship. If they could have provided perfect cleansing, the sacrifices would have stopped, for the worshipers would have been purified once for all time, and their feelings of guilt would have disappeared. But instead, those sacrifices actually reminded them of their sins year after year, for it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Key point number two. Paul adopts Moses' farewell challenge from Deuteronomy 30, 11 through 14 to apply to Christ. Christ has provided for our salvation through his incarnation, that is, God in human form, and his resurrection. God's salvation is right in front of us. He will come to us wherever we are. All we need to do is to respond and accept his gift of salvation. Outline number two, your word, Romans 10, verses 9 through 13 from the New Living Translation Bible. It reads, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scripture tells us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are the same in his respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That is our key verse. Key point number one, God provides the opportunity to everyone who believes to choose to receive the word by opening our mouth, public confession, and the heart, saving faith, to accept and acknowledge Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Paul makes it clear that the process of receiving salvation is not at all complicated. Unlike the way a lot of us were introduced to salvation simply stated, we must confess with our mouth and truly believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. The Bible says when we do this, we will be saved. It is a public statement of our belief. This is not the time to be silent, but a time to let people know what is in our heart. Key point number two. In my opinion, this is Mary Tillman's opinion, as Christians, we must share the very important fact, this very important fact, we all have the same Lord, and we all are the same in this respect. When it comes to salvation, any and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, period. 
It doesn't get any simpler than that. God loves all his children. And when we choose to confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are saved. Knowing this, it is imperative that we share this good news to our family and friends, our co-workers and strangers. There is not one reason why anyone should be lost. Jesus said it was his desire that none of us, none of humanity is lost. Why? Because the plan of salvation is simple and any and everyone has an opportunity to, to confess and believe. How much more simpler does it have to be for people to understand Jesus is calling us every day? Outline number three, Christ's words. And we'll find this in Romans 10, verses 14 through 17. From the New Living Translation Bible, it reads, But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard of him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scriptures say, How beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. But not everyone welcomes the good news. For Isaiah the prophet said, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Christ. Key point number one, we must take God's great message of salvation to others so that they can respond to the good news. How will your loved one and neighbors hear it unless someone tells them? Is God calling you to take a part in making his message known in your community? Think of one person you know who needs to hear the good news and think of something you can do to help him or her to hear it. Then go ahead and take that step as soon as possible. We, the church, have the good news of salvation. We proclaim this through our songs, sermons, confessions of faith, celebration of the Lord's Supper, and submission to baptism. But God wants us to carry his message to the world. We call it the Great Commission. It's found in Matthew 28, 18, 18 through 20. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. My, 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 that is our great commission, brothers and sisters. Key point number two, verse number 16, Paul reminds us of the harsh reality that could dampen our spirits, even cause hesitation in sharing the good news. Everybody who hears will not believe and receive it gladly. Many of the Jews neither believed or accepted obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. Even today, many people, not only Jews, do not accept Jesus as the Savior of the world, but that does not change the fact that he is. Verse number 17, Paul's ministry is driven by this simple fact. People who have never heard the gospel have no opportunity to believe the gospel. The word of God must be preached for it to be heard. In the process, some will believe and some will not. But where there is no preaching, there is no opportunity for one to believe. Brothers and sisters, all believers have an obligation to tell others about this plan of salvation that is so plain and simple that not even a fool can miss the mark. Paul's statement of opening our mouths with confession and believing in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead is much needed to be explained in a world that seemingly has walked away from God. So my question is, what are you, what are we, the church, doing about that. In our lesson summary, the local church remains God's primary appointed vehicle for making it possible for men and women to hear the word of God. 
The word of God is sacred and soul searching. As preachers, teachers, and believers, it is our responsibility to tell everybody, not just on Sunday morning from the pulpit or in the Sunday school classroom. Hebrews 4 and 12 says, The word of God is full of power. It is sharper than the sharpest knife, cutting deep into our innermost thoughts and desires. The word of God is not simply a collection of words from God. It is living, life-changing, and dynamic as it works in us. God's word reveals who we are and what we are not. I'm going to say that again. God's word reveals who we are and what we are not. The demands of God's word requires decisions. We must not only listen to or hear the word, we must allow it to shape our lives. Romans 5 and 8 says, But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were yet sinners. Those are amazing words. That shows the unsaved that God cares, and because he cares, he wants them to confess and believe that Christ died and rose for their redemption. As believers, we should do as Paul instructs in Colossians 3.16. Let the words of Christ in all their richness live in our hearts and make you wise. And verse 17 says, And whatever you do or say, let it be as a representative of the Lord Jesus. In order for the world to be a better place, we've got to open our mouths, tell the good news, and live a life that others would want to follow us. Remembering this, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We must continue to preach and teach the good news. The truth is, Salvation is free, and it is for any and everyone who believes. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for this lesson on confidence. We realize our shortcomings in the area of sharing the plan of salvation to an unfriendly world. Please give us an opportunity and forgive us for not doing as we should. And we pray for continued grace and mercy in our lives as we grow in truth and knowledge of you. Help us to be bold and courageous as we tell others the good news so they too can become your witnesses. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day.